Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's topic for presentation is otosclerosis also called as otospongiosis. Let's take an example of one newly married woman going to his mother-in-law's place where the mother-in-law is trying to speak but the woman is acting like this. She is not able to hear her properly hence she is not able to respond properly. She doesn't know what to do and she is not able to inform to her newly wed husband also. So when she whispers, whenever her mother-in-law whispers, she is not able to hear what is the daughter-in-law. But whenever she screams, her mother-in-law screams, she will be able to respond from wherever she is at home. She is able to respond. This goes on for a while. For, um, subsequently, when they went to a supermarket, where the mother-in-law speaks in normal tone, also because of the noise in the external environment, she will be able to hear better. So whenever the mother-in-law screams, or someone screams, she is able to hear normally. But when they whisper or talk in a normal conversation, they are, she is not able to hear. So what is this condition? This is a unique symptom. It's called as paracusis vilsi, in which a person is able to hear better in a noisy environment than in a quiet surrounding. This is because of the fact that even a normal person will raise his voice, his or her voice, in a noisy environment. So this patient in context has got a condition called as otosclerosis. It's also referred to as otospongiosis. It is actually basically a disease of inner ear where wherein there are certain pathological changes so that the person is having conductive hearing loss. Let's see what is this. The objectives of today's presentation is what is the meaning of otosclerosis, what are the case scenario, etiology, types, symptoms, signs and treatment for the same. So let's see one by one. Otosclerosis also referred as otospongiosis. Oto refers to a of the ear. Oto just means of the ear. Any condition affecting the ear is called as oto. oto otitis media means inflammation of middle ear. Otitis external inflammation of external ear. Like this oto means of the ear. Sclerosis means abnormal hardening of the body tissue. In this scenario, it is the inner ear tissue which is getting abnormally hardened. So it is also referred to as otospongiosis. So again oto means of the ear. Spongiosis means softening of the bony tissue. It is one of the pathological change. Before it becomes completely hardened, it will be like a soft vascular tissue. So it will be called as otospongiosis as well. So let us see what is this. In, during a normal process of hearing, the pinna or the auricle gathers the sound waves towards the external auditory canal, then sets the tympanic membrane into vibration. This tympanic membrane which is which is vibrating, sets the malleus, incus and stapes to oscillate like a pendulum of a clock. Therefore, it is called as ossicle. This footplate of the stapes goes in and out of the cochlea, creating a wave in the cochlear or the endolymphatic fluid, which sets the organ of corti into motion. This organ of corti is a receptor for hearing, wherein the hair cells present over there are connected to the cochlear division of vestibulocochlear nerve which carries the information towards the brainstem ultimately to cerebral cortex temporal lobe where the sense of hearing is perceived that's a general idea about hearing so where is the problem here the problem in this condition in, in otosclerosis is, is in the otic capsule this is the bony cochlea the blue color line shows the membranous cochlea this outline is called the oval window wherein the footplate of steps this tiny blue color is the footplate of steps will go in and out of this oval window because footplate of step is also oval in shape creating a wave in the endolymph or the cochlear fluid thereby setting the organ of corti into motion so this bony cochlea has got three layers so what are the three layers the endosteal layer which is a connective tissue over here it will be there the periosteal layer that is also a connective tissue which is will be over here and in between tissue will be enchondral layer which is basically made up of cartilage and this area when it comes over here the same layers will be there so so what happens the footplate of step should be easily able to go in and out of this oval window like a piston but if at all this enchondral layer which is made up of cartilage is replaced by a bony hard tissue there will be fixation of the footplate of steps so thereby it can't move in and out thereby the person will not be able to hear that kind of deafness will be called as conductive hearing loss or conductive deafness so that the problem is there the pathology is there in the enchondral layer or the cartilaginous layer of the otic capsule that is where the pathology lies in otosclerosis it is primarily a disease of the bony labyrinth wherein one or more foci of spongy bone 
replaces the normal dense enchondral layer just now we are talking about this of the OT capsule this area wherein there will be resulting in fixation of the foot plate of stapes resulting in conductive heat. this is the basic pathology involved in otosclerosis or otospongiosis coming to the this is the foot plate of stapes it won't go in and out of this like a piston come on to the case scenario a female patient 56 years of age white race whose occupation appears to be with that of a housework and under three years of development she has got from past three years the development of bilateral hearing loss it's, it's a gradual in onset and gradually progressive accompanied by nausea and ringing tremble denied otalgia and otoria also she denies she denies worsening of hearing loss all these three symptoms are there but patient denies of that to accept those symptoms let's see what is this coming to the etiology most of them don't know what is the etiology it's unknown etiology it's also called idiopathic some of them from birth it will be there it's called congenital some of them it will develop because of the family history being positive it is hereditary it's called as race just now i saw white race it's more common than black race indians more common than chinese and japanese sex it's more commonly involving female sex when compared to the male 3 to 1 ratio age of onset usually between 20 to 30 years of age that is usually the marriage marriage age other factors include the deafness worsens after menopause and the deafness worsens after an accident or a major depression or a major operation after a viral infection all these are risk factors for worsening of the deafness so what are the types of otosclerosis let's see that so there are three types of otosclerosis which can happen more often than not majority of the times it happens near the foot plate of stapes it can also happen anywhere down the cochlea or it can be only microscopic or histological type that's a rare variety it is also possible so in stapedial otosclerosis wherein the primary focus of occlusion can be in the anterior part of the foot plate of stapes or posterior part of the foot plate of stapes or entire circumference it's called circumferential or it can be biscuit type wherein one outer layer and one inner layer in between cheesy material will be there it's called biscuit type or the entire foot plate of stape is fully sclerosed that is called as obliterative type these are the various various types of stapedial otosclerosis resulting in conductive hearing loss come to the cochlear otosclerosis anywhere down the line of the cochlea other than foot plate of stapes that is called cochlear otosclerosis histological it is only most of the patients are asymptomatic it is only a histological finding it uh, doesn't manifest with symptoms come on to the, the symptoms of photosclerosis basically they have hearing loss i already told you it's a conductive type of hearing loss and most unique symptom of this is paraacusis we'll see wherein the patient is able to hear better in a noisy environment than in a silent environment i already told you the example of mother-in-law and daughter-in-law not able to converse it at home but they are able to converse it well at a shopping mall or a grocery shop and tinnitus ringing or hissing noise inside the ear then vertigo rarely the patients with otosclerosis have vertigo but they have monotonous speech that is they are not able to modulate their voice into high pitch or low pitch tone they are continuously speaking the same tone coming to the signs the tympanic membrane on examination will be normal eustachian tube also normal tuning for test normally air conduction is better than bone conduction but in this case bone conduction will be better than air conduction that suggests you of conductive hearing loss Weber's test lateralization towards the affected ear because bone conduction is better absolute bone conduction test will be normal come to the pure tone audiometry normally you know mark the hearing in decibel and frequency in this axis what is this axis x axis this is y axis hearing in decibels and this one frequencies in hertz air conduction usually at, stays at a higher level when compared to bone conduction which stays at a lower level or the middle of the graph in case of otosclerosis the air conduction has gone to the bottom of the graph so you can see that here while the bone conduction is improved and there is a classical dip at the level of 2000 hertz this is a classical notch it's called as Carhartt's notch wherein there is a dip, depression in the graph there is a notch in the graph therefore it's called like that Carhartt's notch so in the bone conduction shows better than ear conduction and there is a dip in the bone conduction at specific frequency 2000 Hertz this notch is called as Carhartt's notch is a confirmation of the diagnosis of otosclerosis 
coming to the treatment aspect interesting treatment aspect is available for otosclerosis one is sodium fluoride treatment wherein it's controversial whether it is really effective or not we don't know but it has been tried in certain cases of mild cases of otosclerosis surgical treatment is actually the treatment of choice and the first procedure is stapedotomy wherein a hole is created in the foot plate of stapes so that it is the piston like movement is permitted wherever the sclerotic tissue is there that has been excised and a hole is created so that there is a piston like movement then the next option will be stapedectomy that is removal of whatever is been sclerosed the entire thing will be removed followed by prosthetic like similar to a piston one prosthesis will be inserted to that area so let's see what this case one more time a female patient 56 years of age white race so she is a house worker with 3 years of development of bilateral hearing loss gradual in onset progressive she has nausea ringing sensation denied otalgia and otorrhea and also worsening of hearing loss she denies so this is a classical of otosclerosis so the surgery of choice in otosclerosis either stapedotomy or stapedectomy sodium fluoride I already told you it's been tried in few cases of mild otosclerosis with excellent results but selection of the patient with for steep surgery that is stapedotomy or stapedectomy is dependent on these four factors first of all the hearing threshold for air conduction should be 30 decibels or worse then only the procedure will have some significant improvement in hearing if the hearing loss or hearing threshold is minimal the patient doesn't find any better after the surgery so therefore there should be minimum of 30 decibel or worse hearing loss should be there the gap between previously you saw the graph na, air conduction and bone conduction the gap between the two should be at least 15 decibels then only significant improvement will be there a Rhinus test will be negative that is bone conduction will be better than air conduction and the person is not able to hear for minimal hertz like 256 and 512 hertz but 1026 they are able to hear for this frequency they are able to hear for the minimal frequencies they are not able to hear these are the candidates suitable for surgery speech discrimination score should be at least 60 percent or more then only they will be able to benefit from the surgery so these are the selection criteria for the patients for otosclerosis for stepidectomy okay in this stepidectomy let's see what we will do exactly this is the tympanic membrane this is the malleus this is the incus and this is the stapes all the stapes it's horizontally oriented this will move in and out like a piston now it's not moving therefore it has been removed the entire stapes will be removed that's called a stepidectomy after removing we can't leave it alone like this because the connection between the incus and cochlea will be gone because that was the stapes we have removed that it's gone now so to replace it so can you see this 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 hook like things these are like a these are the various types of pistons like thing similar to steps it's there but always natural is natural but this piston will have a hook like an umbrella hook that will be hooked down to the incus and the oval shape the head of the umbrella oval shape that is fitted into the oval window so they are of various material they are of various material the processes i'm talking of teflon material platinum titanium material so various types of material other their shelf life will be more based on the patient's affordability these kind of materials will be fixed into their inner ear the person will have drastic improvement if their hearing loss was more then there will be a drastic improvement in the uh, post surgically so these are the types of processes which has been used with significant recovery kindly like and share this video and consider subscribing and press the bell button for latest updates thank you once again like and share this video with your family and friends. Thank you.